Hello everybody, how's it going today? Super Fiend here, and welcome back to our Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough as the Tomb Kings. Our faction leader is Grand Hero Font God Damn. <laughs> He's right here. And you know what? We are on the verge of destroying the scaling. I would really like to get that done this episode. We got Vandrid Knutsen or Nutsen. Over there, that's their last remaining army, I believe, and they're gonna try to settle in. So what we're gonna do? We uh, we we took um, what's this? Shagrath. We took this back from them. They took it from us. We took it back from them. That was all last episode. It was a small but effective scaling army. We're gonna take Katep though, and we're going to just push way down over here. In fact, we're gonna go as far as to Force March because I want to make sure if they settle Tor. Koruli, Koruli. I want to make sure that we can attack them on the next turn and wipe them out. Okay. We also had a rebellion and we lost either Troll, Fjord, or Pack Ice Bay. I forget which one, but we no longer have any territory in Albion. And over here, we lost a settlement too from a rebellion, which was planned. This was not territory that we ever wanted to hold on to. There's one more small settlement here that is part of this province hopefully we'll get a rebellion in two turns and the skaven which who are our allies will not kill it off like they did previously now oh look at this lothern finally brought a force up because lothern is just getting crushed here they've got their ritual is going on and they got chaos forces they got a war band they have two intervention armies all on top of this settlement uh, however, Tower of Lysine, Lysian, is not part of the ritual, so none of these armies are going to come over here and attack this. However, Clan Rictus may do that and get the job done. I can't imagine that they have a very strong force here. And what we are going to do is we're going to try to push up and attack Avalorn. They've brought their two strongest armies, led by Thalos and Ilariel the Radiant. Nothing to scoff at. They've brought them up here to Tor Saror. And there's a couple, oh, let's see, Clan Rictus is laying siege down here. So I imagine this is going to fall. It's got a big garrison, though. It's not their capital, though, is it? Uh, it might be their capital, but I, I think it's their capital. That's why it's got a big garrison. So anyways, I think that's going to fall, and maybe they'll come out down here and defend it. But we're going to come up this way while these forces are occupied with these two armies. So let's go ahead and get that moving. So we're going to come all the way up here towards Port Elastor. My will be done. We can almost get there, but not quite. Uh, next turn, we should be able to attack it. These are not very good armies. Uh, they got a lot of heroes in there. We're going to have a tough time bringing this down. Two Lore Masters of Hoath. Oh, dear. And they got some Phoenix Guard and other stuff. Hopefully, they don't recruit up um, before we can attack. Now, over here, where we are at war with the Pirates of Sartosa. And, you know, this is a fast-moving army. Uh, but it does have Ushapti with great bows. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and initiate the attack with King Lemizash. I'm kind of tempted to just auto-resolve this. Yeah, let's do that. And let's raise this because I don't want to uh, occupy this territory. It's bad territory for us. And then that means with this army, we probably just come down here and raise this as well. Yeah. We can auto-resolve this. Whoa! Faction destroyed? Pirates of Sartosa. Are you telling me that they do not have anything over here on this island? We are still heading this way. We are going to check it out. Nothing. King of greatest dynasty. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I'm very surprised that that is unoccupied. So Pirates of Sartosa are destroyed. And now we can take all of these armies and head south, south down here, I guess. And attack Thagen's Errantry. Yeah, so that's as much as we can do. Okay, let's spend our skill point. Well, as much as we can do over here. We can finally pick up our Camrian War Sphinx for King Wackaf. King Lemizash has a 
skill point. Ignorant. Ignorant. Hmm. Well, we've got kind of everything we need from the red ones, huh? Yeah, I don't think we need any more out of the red, so let's go yellow. Indomitable will. Uh, what's going on here? I got another skill point. Ah. I suspect treachery. Let us get missile resist. These okay, so that all looks good over there. And then this army, way back up this way, we can move them out. And I think we're going to go ahead and force march. Can we move through here? Yeah, we can move through there. We're going to bring this army kind of down this way. It's going to take a few turns to get there, I think. And uh, we want to get down this way because we are now at war with High Queen Kalita, the court of Libaros. They may come out and attack us, but looking at, at their faction, they are pretty much surrounded by Clan Pestilence down here. So I guess it just really depends on how well Clan Pestilence is going to do against the Court of Labaris um, in terms of deciding how much of a threat or how threatened our territory right here will be. Because we do have this territory bumped up against the other Tomb Kings here, but I'm thinking we're not gonna lose it. We are currently at our army cap, I think. We can't recruit an army to go down there and reinforce, unfortunately. Let's check that out. Yeah, we'd have to disband somebody. I don't want to do that. Okay, and then we have two armies. And we just spent a bunch of turns, like, sending all of our armies, six or seven armies from over here, or over here, rather, all the way across the ocean to help with Lothern. And so now let's get these two armies, and let's bring them... I think towards Thegan's Aaron Tree. To see. From the My will be done. And we'll come around the corner with these guys. My it. Okay, and we're going to come over here to keep an eye on the scaling man. army if they do try to escape. And we've got this guy that we're using to keep an eye on Avalorn. And then we have King Wakaf has, um, he's got some movement. We'll start replenishing with him. Uh, this Necrotech is going to come up into Lemizash's army, so we'll move him most of the way there. We're going to move this army or this hero this way so we can look out for more scaling armies, of which I think there are none. We're not going to upgrade this because I would like the Rebellion to take it. And let's move these guys uh, around the corner because we have an army that they're all going to move into. Sea travel. And we can end our turn. Now, where did that come from? Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm getting <laughs> getting a text from my wife. She was uh, she was helping uh, our oldest daughter with something on the computer, and then our son, who is 12 months old, runs over and pushes the power button, <laughs> and it turns the computer off. <laughs> and so my wife is asking, is there a way to set the power button so that it doesn't turn off the computer? So that's something I'll get to go fix <laughs> next time I go upstairs. Uh, he's a he's a smart little guy. He's a very smart little guy. He's he's learning a little bit of sign language, and um, 
he just learned how to use markers, which is wonderful because he's probably going to paint all the walls soon. He can take the cap off, he can color, and then he can put the cap back on. Interesting thing that I've noticed with all of my kids. Um, a couple times he has like snuck through a door that he's not supposed to get through. And all of my kids have done this. When they learn how to start opening baby gates and sneaking through the doors, it's not like they just go through it and leave it open so that you know they did. They always, always, always shut it behind them. They always put it back the way it was, which I think is kind of funny. There's like this natural inclination to put it back uh, the way it was before they uh, snuck through it. So anyways, uh, if this is, yeah, this is Vandred Knutson. Vandred Knutson. Let's go ahead and chase this guy down. He's in a force march. This better be the end of their faction. I'm hoping. Faction destroyed! The scaling are gone! And I don't care about the imminent rebellion over at Tiranak. And now with Katep, I guess we can start bringing him down because he's going to have to fight a battle at the Black Pyramid at some point. So let's bring him down that way to do that. Uh, can I get this thing? Oh, I'd have to go like out and around and down. Yeah, forget it. Maybe we should pick up some of these sea treasures with Katep. Like we could come out here and then go around this way. What is this? What the heck is going on here? There's just like a, uh, what? Like a little merchant shop or something? It's just right on the road here where everything is raised. It's kind of silly. Okay. These three heroes here. Let's, um, hmm. Where can we get onto the shore? Right here, I guess. So let's let's go about halfway. Because then we can uncover the enemy if they're nearby. Okay, all three of these armies moving together in a tight pack. And then we can swing down this way. This is not good territory for us, right? Yeah, unpleasant. So let's uh, come south with these two armies. Uh, maybe we could pick this up with King Thutep think about it okay right here um we're gonna put this necrotect into lemise ash's force i would like to replenish with lemise ash and there's um a sea treasure right there that we can grab so this says 51 percent movement left over i'll be surprised if it's if it's true it was true Okay, and then this army move to here. Let's um, let's recruit here. What is what's our ability? We're yellow, no red line, so it's pretty much an open slate with this army. We can pick whatever. So let's grab um, two more front line. It's gonna take like two turns for him to get over here, so. We've already got a couple units of stalkers. Uh, let's get two units of carry in. Okay, we'll bring this guy back that way. So Thalos has kind of come back. What happened here? Did they break the siege? Maybe the garrison chased them off? I don't know. It seems like they had a battle. They're a little bit weak, but they're replenishing. So I don't know what happened there. And Angerial is destroyed. And then these armies, or these heroes, I'm sorry. Let's move them to the east. We want to meet them up with their destined army. Doom Prince of Nehekara. Well, there you go. That's how you say it. They've not managed to recruit anything extra here. So... Let's lay siege with um, our army that has the Screaming Skull Catapult, and then we'll move into a reinforcement range with our second stack here. And I think we want to hit this uh, quick. And then our next, our next attack will be at the White Tower. So let us immediately... 
start thinking about what we need to recruit to make attacking that easier. I think a bone giant and can't get any more of the big units down here. Maybe just another skelly unit. Okay. And let's go ahead and initiate this battle. Attacking Avalorn. We're going to fight this manually. Um, hmm. No, we're not. Forget it. We'll raise this. Okay, wiped out a whole bunch of stuff there. I was thinking about fighting it manually, but uh, there's a chance that we might be able to do something a little bit more interesting than that battle. But All right, who all has not moved? Heroes over here. Okay, this hero we can bring way south because there's nothing left for him to scout over in this area. Okay, there shouldn't be any Skaven or anything. And similar here, there's no more scaling, so we can bring them this way. Now, is there anything we can pick up on our way south? Uh, there is if we come out here. Uh, I don't think I want to veer that far off course. Arcane Conduit for the Winds of Magic. Settlement upgrade available. Let's skip that. Imminent Rebellion in the same settlement. Has everybody truly moved? Open the casket of souls. Uh, yeah, it looks that way, but we have somebody here we can spend a skill point on. Cleanse Corruption, yay. And let's just look and see if High Queen Kalita is moving any armies to where she can attack us. Not yet. Uh, we would need 2,000 jars to be able to increase our army capacity, so it does not look like that is going to happen anytime soon. Let us end our turn. And see what happens here. Okay, so they're going after Clan Rictus. One of the Chaos Armies has moved over that way, so they may take it. And Avalorn has reinforced the White Tower of Hoth. Not surprised. Will Clan Rictus counterattack? It's not a very good army. I'm surprised. He's going for it. <laughs> All right, they're back laying siege. Are they going to attack it on this turn? They're bringing up everything. Three armies total there. I'm guessing they're not going to attack it. Ooh, Lotharin loses another settlement to one of the intervention marauding chaos slash whatever forces. And I think they're out of settlements. They're down to just that last army. And the way we can tell... Really, the rebellion popped in but did not attack the settlement on the turn they arrived. That is surprising. Normally, they attack straight away. Okay, so they are out of settlements because they're taking attrition. What's the, uh, like, chaos corruption here? Can't tell. Uh, surprising to me, though, the intervention and chaos forces haven't disappeared. So I guess they're going to hang around until the army itself is gone. All right, we got a few turns here of uh, recruitment. Let's go ahead and get another uh, skelly unit. Uh, we need to replenish. Let's just get skeletons with spears. It's crappy. 
Okay, Elariel slash Avalorn is down to almost nothing. Down to almost nothing. All right, Katep. Let's uh, let's send you out into the water. Can you go across here? And then you can also go that way. So that's one. And then swing back that way, maybe. Come around the outside here. There's another treasure there. Still replenishing there. Not quite done. Still replenishing with Lumi's Ash as well. So let's just let these armies finish. I think it's the smart thing to do. Uh, I don't want to pick this up with our weaker force. Do I want to pick it up with this force? Ah, it's not that good of an army. And if they have a really strong army, we could take a lot of damage. But um, at the same time, we don't get a lot of followers and stuff. Uh, we will perform better in battle. So we now have armor piercing damage, armor, and increased weapon strength for 10 turns on this force. There was no battle attached with that, so that's okay. And here we go. Fagin's Errantry has holed up in here. We are replenishing? That's odd. Can I get up onto the shore? Okay, we made it onto the shore. With all three armies, it would appear. Okay, so next turn, we can have some fighting over here. Are we at war with you? We are not at war with you. Alright, over here. A very big move, but we are going to dodge the attrition by stopping just a little bit short. And all of our heroes. More slaves. More slaves. More. Shy slave. The dead sail. Winds of change. Set sail. And these guys are all going to drop into King Kadeskaf's army when he catches up down here. Let's move him south as well. And we'll bring this guy south. Ooh. We can build over here. So we shall. Oh, look, we got some more uh, Screaming Skull Catapult stuff we can do. Ha, 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 I haven't been paying attention to the buildings over here, so let's go ahead. Let's upgrade all this real quick. Increase our cavalry options. Uh, we'll build walls there. Pah, walks. Ooh, lots of uh, choices in here. Let's uh, build up our walls. Build that. Build that. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, let's go with catapults. Lots and lots of catapults. We got so much money, I wasn't even paying attention to how much we were spending while we did that. And what are our rituals currently that we can do? We can do growth for all provinces, construction time minus 25% for all buildings, and tomb swarm for all armies. That's not bad. This last 10 turns. Uh, might come in handy if High Queen Kalita actually attacks us. Let's do this. It's got a 25 turn cooldown. And now we'll end our turn. Let's see what Lothering does. They got nowhere to go. Yeah, they're doomed.
Ah, uh, there it is. Faction destroyed Lothern. And the Lizardman intervention also destroyed... Did the Skaven intervention... Did they get destroyed or did they settle that city? Vegan's errantry wants nothing to do with us. That's pretty much expected. And the Puppets of Chaos and the Warband, whatever it was called, were also destroyed. So they spawned out. Faction destroyed, faction destroyed, faction destroyed. Warband of the something or other. Okie dokie. Uh, wow. What happened to Alariel? Did she get crushed up here? I think she did. Make, make kill things. Like, did they just plow right through her? Because if they did, Avalorn is doomed. I think they did. Okay, Katap. Uh, do we want to do this? Let's see if we can, like, make our uh, better in battle. Yeah. Armor piercing damage, armor, and weapon strength. Very good. And then uh, no reason not to go in the full speed ahead. And then moving south with this guy. Fifty-four percent chance of, or fifty-four percent movement left over, so we should ha be able to entomb, and we did. What? We're still replenishing here. Uh, I think we're close enough, though. So let's go ahead and move out. So we'll just go south. Find my Move it. Okay, that looks good. All right, over here we've got a skill point we can spend on our tomb prints. So, this will get Wound Maker and increase our weapon strength. And then we'll move south with our army. Set sail. Priest King of Greatest Dynasty. Thegan's Errantry owns all this. Okay. Oh, we're going to have some action in here, I think. And then let's move this army. Let's check on the storm. Um, we can't make it to the mysterious island, so what we're going to do is we're just going to force march and go past it. We also have a skill point for our tomb prints. Relatively low level tomb prints. We'll put that in the blade master. I think that increases his weapon skill. Or his weapon strength. No, melee attack. You know what? I'm getting confused with the Morngull Haunters or the Morngulls, whatever they're called in the Vampire Coast. They have two skills that increase weapon strength, whereas most of the other factions only have one. And it's in the second group, like here, where it says Woundmaker. But Vampire Coast has one down in here that is essentially the same. It's, it's like a repeat, although they are differently named. So your Morngull heroes can do lots of damage in Vampire Coast. All right, these guys, eh, I'll just kind of like, they're waiting for him, okay? So we can just kind of get them all right here. And as he moves down, we can move them in. All right, I got some action. I got some action. Yeah, we're going to crush you guys. Really? They're going to do that well, huh? They got foot squires, great sword infantry. I'm not really familiar with Bretonian units. Men at arms. Spearmen at arms. Three of those. They got some peasant bowmen with a range of 168, which is pretty good range, really. They got a decent amount of ammunition. They got Grell Knights, Knights of the Realm. And a paladin who is anti-large. He is guardian. So affects allies in range. He has a 15% physical resist for a small radius of 30 meters. It's not much. End their existence. Uh, continue our siege. Oh, 
they're going to have walls, aren't they? Like the Bretonian, a second ago, this didn't show walls as like these little ramparts right here. I'm pretty sure it didn't show them. But they do have walls and it's trying to trick me. We're going to move up with this army. We're going to entomb. We'll leave that army where it is. And we're going to fight this battle now against this walled settlement. And we're going to uproot these guys. Now, this is a climate that we can settle in without any negative penalties. So we'll probably just occupy uh, when we win here. And our reinforcing army has to move shop tea with great bows, I think, and some other artillery units. So we'll knock out the towers with them. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll set up our halberds, anti-large like so. Tomb guard there. Our heroes. Sepulchral stalkers in the back. And let's put our two scorpions here. Now our healing ability will heal all this. So if their towers focus fire on these units, we can get some healing there. We'll go ahead and gamble because 10 is kind of low. Could go either way here. Okay, good. Um, all right, it was green, but we didn't gain anything fun. Okay, here is our other Tomb King. Here is our other caster. The towers are shooting us. Let's move up with our Nehekara warriors. Move up with our reinforcing tomb guard. Tomb guard with halberds that are reinforcing can come up to there. Chariots can kind of pull back. Your Shopti can come up. Necro Sphinx can come up. And then our Screaming Skull Catapult will hit this tower. And our Ushabti with Great Bows will come up to here. I can never tell these apart. Okay, so the Camry and War Sphinx and the Necro Sphinx. And it's the Necro Sphinx that is anti-large. Uh, where are you going? Why are you running way up there? Were you supposed to do that? I don't think you were. Uh, anyways, back to these guys. I can never tell them apart. So this is the one that's anti-large. He's got like the big cleaver. And these ones have no big cleaver. They're anti-infantry. Like, I got to come up with a way to tell these things apart. Because I can never do it. I always feel like such a ding-dong. Uh, let's go ahead and heal and heal these things up. Screaming Skull Catapult is now firing. Let us assist with the Ushabti with great bows. Let's come down here and watch them fire. Ooh, yeah. Look at them. They stand so stoic and posed. Moving only briefly for a moment to fire their arrows. The tower is going to go down fast. That should be it. I'm surprised that, that did do it. Okay. Let us shoot the other tower. And where is our Screaming Skull catapult? That looks like it. Let's watch it throw some uh, Screaming Skulls over here. Skelly boys moving it into position. Lots of fun. Wow, you know, I've never zoomed in and looked at this thing. Look at how cool that is. It's a crawling corpse. Like, seriously, who thinks of this stuff? I would have never thought of that. Anything special about the skeletons? They look pretty good. These are pretty good models. All right. Both towers are down. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and knock some holes here and then we'll move in. And we'll put a tomb swarm down on these guys. And then we got some other direct damage and stuff that we can deal. Uh, let's go ahead and move up. Let's hit these guys with lots of magic. Let's just try to like wipe them out before we ever even have to engage them. Uh, let's put that right there. Ah, soft magic. There he goes. He is awfully quick, isn't he? Seems fast. All right, he's dropped a damage spell on them. Let's uh, let's come over here to the uh, flank. Screaming Skull Catapult hitting for some decent damage. Maybe. Not really. The Ushati with the Great Bows are much more effective. Let's put the Screaming Skull on the Peasant Bowman. And then in just a moment here. I think we'll cast our direct damage on the Grail Knights. Okay, we're almost ready. Uh, increased area of effect, 27 seconds. It's 27 seconds no matter what. Uh, you know, it's not that... Hmm. All right, let's throw that Vortex back there. And then as soon as it's done, we'll drop this on the Grill Knights and see what happens. You know... Seems like it kind of missed the wee bit. Hovering around behind the ranks. Okay, getting a few of them. Not bad. But that yeah, was not that effective, huh? It did a little bit of damage in there. What about the other ability? That was that was okay. That wasn't half bad. Uh, what are our Ushab to with the Great Bow shoot? Yeah, shoot at the Grail Knights, please. And we'll drop that one more time over here. Now we can also afford to put this uh, right back there. And I'll put this back on them. Okay, they're gonna take lots of magic damage in here. Really, I feel like this could be doing more damage. This one over here is doing okay. Ooh, it's like scarabs or something. I've never actually looked at it. All right. Guess what? It's time to go uh, crush these guys. Let's charge in here and attack the foot squires. What are you doing way up here? Why have you chosen to do this? Let's bring our chariots up. Because this could be fun. <laughs> Uh, let's freeze just come right up to here yeah, Let's get that uh, cast Boom hey, Get on these guys get on these guys let's Come in with our chariot Come in with our tomb scorpion. We are absolutely going to crush these guys here. Bring our light mage like over this way. Charge in here. Let's bring our chariot unit this way. And get chariots in their backfield. Charge into the peasant bowman. Let's drop this on. Well, let's just walk in first. Are okay, we attacking all this over here? Very good.
Put that there. Attack this guy. Attack him. Should be almost done with this battle. They got some Knights of the Realm still up. Oh, they got some foot squires. These are their great sword infantry. Let's give them some of our special units. And let's greet them with our chariots also. Here we come. Chariot charge. Right into the foot squires. And a giant Camryan Sphinx charging in the battle like it's some sort of excited uh, stone puppy dog. <laughs> You can get him. Come on. Doom Scorpion. Come on, get up here. Okay, we got men at arms with shields here. Charge in. These guys are crushed. Let's go attack the men at arms in the backfield. Come on, get on them. Let's get on the peasant bowmen over here now. All right, hoping for a nice charge here. Oh, right into them. I don't think their charge was very effective. Let's damage these guys, and that's it. That's all she wrote. So nothing too difficult there. And like I said, we're gonna occupy this and establish our foothold over here in, I guess it's the Badlands, I'm not entirely sure. I think it is. Victory, yes! <laughs> <laughs> He's very excited. Let's occupy. Uh, construction costs minus 15% for infrastructure buildings. Land of the dead. Mm hmm. I would like to. The king well, you know what? I guess we're going to go into an ambush heart. stance. Okay, so next turn. Next turn. Should be able to attack Al Haik. Haik? is level two let us build the garrison building all right this guy will come south we can upgrade our capital town center we will ignore this one because i would like the rebellion to destroy it and that's it that's everybody huh everyone's had a turn we've all had a fair shake at this We've all stepped up to the plate. Oh boy, okay, so they're piling up with their last remaining settlements and Clan Rictus, I'm hoping, is just gonna push really hard towards White Tower of Hoeth and uh, get rid of that nasty settlement for us. Or no, maybe they'll take Gain Vale. Very good. And they are laying siege at Tor Saror, or however you say it. And I don't think Avalorn is going to be able to reinforce it or uh, break the siege before on their turn. So I think Clan Rictus will move that way and take it. And that's gonna leave Avalorn with at most two settlements, I think. 
uh, military alliance between last defenders and Spinosotech dwarves. Our ambush in the Badlands has been foiled. Here comes the gear or the rebellion. Very good. Wipe us out. Raise it. Occupy it. I don't care. I don't want Tiranok. And ooh, well, what do we have here? So we hurt our infantry, boost our monsters, or we hurt our monsters, boost our infantry. I'm going to keep our monsters strong. Let's do that. Uh, one of our Lich Priests has dared approach with concerns that one of the Necro Sphinxes is no longer under the control of our warrior souls, but instead is enthralled to Usek, the destructive god buried beneath the sands. Dare we destroy it and risk his unending wrath? We will uh, leave it. Okie dokie. Uh, looking up here. So Avalorn, I don't think is going to be able to save Tor, Sarir, and I think Clan Rictus can force march and destroy it. This is a pretty decent army as it is. So after that, they will have one, two, three settlements. We got two turns until our Bone Giant is ready. Uh, we really don't stand much of a chance against Thalos, and we certainly... Uh, probably don't want to assault this settlement. Uh, King Kadeskaf will continue to come down this way. Eventually, we'll get the heroes in there. Kotep will also come south. And then all of our armies here and here will continue heading towards the Badlands. And I think... Oh, I think... We need to attack al Haik, right? So we've already got Martek. And it would be good for us to get this. And then, of course, we want to get extra growth over here and try to boost the growth level of the town center to three so we can get walls. And then I don't think we'll need it, but we're going to keep bringing this army over here south a little bit to defend against the court of Labaras. But that's all going to happen when we come back in the next episode. Let me know if you enjoyed this with comments or thumbs up. I'm enjoying it. I uh, got a little bit done this episode. Scaling is gone. Lothern is gone, although we didn't deliver the killing blow to Lothern. Uh, check out the rest of the channel if you have not already and consider subscribing. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great afternoon and take care.